Waiting for inspiration to strike is like waiting for luck to come to you. And it's surprisingly common. Um, maybe a lot of you who are watching this right now, you your typical MO is to create when you feel inspired, right? Or opposite would be you prevent yourself from creating or you give yourself an excuse not to create when you don't feel inspired, right? Well, look at what happens over time. You create in such spurts, and then you probably have long times of being fallow, and then maybe eventually something from the world strikes you as uh, a great idea, and then you create again, and then you... And it just kind of goes like this, and it's very inconsistent. And if you look at this over the long, long haul, you don't create as much as those who, like myself, make it a discipline of creating. Now, one of the issues I've heard again and again from, from clients is, you know, George, I do capture my ideas when they come to me. But then, George, I, I set a schedule to create and I show up, right? J just like I had on my calendar, I show up to create. I look at my ideas. And none of them inspire me. They feel stale now. I doubt whether those ideas are going to be useful, interesting to others. Let me just tell you that is normal. That's normal. You, When you first get an idea and you capture it, by the way, this is something I recommend all of you have as a consistent practice. Like you, sh you know, I just, as you go out throughout the day, you have some idea for a piece of content or an offer you might make, write it down as soon as possible. I always, most of us have our phones with us and quickly open up whatever note or whatever place you can easily capture ideas. That's essential. I do this all the time. And I'm surprised when people don't because if you don't capture your ideas as they come to you, your muse, shall we say, or your creative part won't trust as much that it can give you ideas and that you'll make use of it. It's a weird relationship we have to creativity. The more we practice capturing ideas, the more creativity, your muse, your you know spirit guide or whatever will, will give you ideas, trusting that you're going to find it valuable and make use of it. So capture your ideas. But the thing is, when an idea first comes to you, there is that moment of lucidity, the moment where some, some new thing or, or new thought okay, merges with all of the context from your past, all of the problems you've faced, all of the situations, um, you know, people you've talked to, all of the unique situations your life has given you, all of that somehow, all the other ideas that you've, you've considered, all that somehow merges into this moment of brilliance, of this idea, like, oh my gosh, wow, you know? And it's, it's so obvious to you that it's so brilliant in that moment because it's the moment of integration, okay? It's, it's, it has a newness and a shine to it. And then you capture it. And then a few days later, or whenever you create, that moment has already passed. It's already become obvious to you. <clears throat> it's become more obvious to you. So when you look at it, you're like, well, what's the big deal? That's, or maybe, maybe you even start to see holes, poke, you start poking holes in that idea, right? And that's okay too. And so what do we do at that point? Do we then toss out those ideas and go, well, I'm not inspired to create, which is what a lot of you seem to do. No, no, no. We still stick with the inspiration. Uh, sorry, we still stick not with the inspiration, with the discipline of creating. Because just like if you don't capture your ideas as they come to you, your creativity will stop giving you ideas as, as much. Similarly, if you don't create on a disciplined, consistent basis, your creativity will also say you can't be trusted to create consistently so we're just going to only give you the energy to create every once in a while whereas when i first started creating 
back in consistently when I start, started giving myself that discipline back in 2014. I was going to, sh- in 2014, I showed up every single week, I think twice a week to make a video and a podcast episode every single week for, uh, I think it was for about 35 weeks or so. And then I unfortunately stopped. I should have kept it going. But anyway, 2015, I again picked up the pace. I picked up this consistency. And now I was doing it every single day, five days a week, I was doing it. And I did it for half a year before I then brought it down to three, only three times a week creating. Uh, and I did that for, I think, I think a year. And then I brought it down to two times a week creating. And, and now I'm, I'm basically creating a new thing, basically a new thing once a week. Okay. So it's still a rhythm for me. And then the other times of the week, I'm posting something old, older that was, that did well. Anyway, a discipline of creation can be at different frequencies, but you, you, you start with whatever you can keep up and maintain. Ideally you do something every day because then uh, you build that muscle much more quickly. And there's no question, did I create today? That's, it's a very simple yes or no answer rather than, well, when I'm going to do it this week. And then you're, you'll always be draining your energy to, to think about when am I going to do it this week rather than every single day. Or if you're going to just make a disciplined commitment to say, okay, it's every Tuesday or every Friday or whatever, a particular day, it's like, no matter what that day I'm creating, even if family is visiting me, if, even if I'm sick, I, I've, I've created consistently in all those in both of the circumstances and everything else too when things something is really bad something's really good whatever something's really chaotic i am still creating based on that discipline and so let, let's go back to that that problem i mentioned you look you you show up for your creating time you look at the ideas they don't inspire you what to do next okay so it's important to remember that the idea inspired you when you captured it. Otherwise, you wouldn't have written it down. And that inspiration is worth something. That inspiration may be just what someone else in your audience needs. Now, when you're creating a few days later or a few weeks or whatever later, and you see holes in that idea, that means you get to improve upon it. But don't throw out an idea if it inspired you some time ago, okay? It was a reason why for you, it was useful or interesting. And it's probably gonna be useful and interesting to people like you as well, to your audience, to your ideal audience. So among your list, okay, you've sat down, you created, nothing inspires you. No, no, no. Look at the list and see what is, <laughs> what is least uninspiring to you okay okay fine uninspiring 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 less uninspiring there's a bit of a spark there good okay good pick that one don't perseverate and like what's the perfect idea no just go down the list and pick one the first one you see that's the least uninspiring to you okay that's my dog um you might have seen um and then expand on the idea if you see holes in an idea, try to fill in those holes with, you know, updates, updated thoughts, okay? And um, to try to try to solve any little problems you see in that one small idea. And then as you begin creating, writing, recording, whatever, and you, again, stay, <laughs> stay and just trust that I'm going to expand on this stale idea because I trust the original inspiration. I'm going to respect my muse in the moment when I captured it. Good, because your muse will give you more ideas if you respect it, okay? Respect her, him, they, them, whatever. Okay, so as you're staying and creating, you will notice that inspiration comes back again. Flow and creativity always come back again if you respect the process of staying within. I'm just going to keep expanding on the, I'm just going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. I'm going to try. Okay. I'm going to uh, try to think outside the box, try to think inside the box, try to connect some ideas. I'm going to try to fill in some holes. I'm going to try to think about this in an opposite way. Whatever you can do to keep trying to work with that idea in writing, recording, 
you don't have to record a video publicly like this, but you can record a video to, you know, record a note to yourself. However it is that allows you to try working with ideas, your creativity, your flow will start to come back. That energy of creation is generated by your willingness for it to come. Your willingness of putting in the energy and effort will be reciprocated by life's energy saying, we're going to work with you. The universe will partner with you at that point. Now, sometimes it takes you 15 minutes of trying, trying, trying before you start to feel that, that spark coming back. Sometimes it takes you 45 minutes. I mean, I give myself an hour to, um, to, to write my, to draft my blog post, right? To write my blog post before I publish it. And sometimes it really does. I'm like trying, trying, trying. And 45 minutes, 50 minutes later, I'm like, oh my gosh, okay. I got, I, it's now, it's now gelling. There's something in, really interesting is happening to me. And again, I, I call myself a, a, um, a creative agnostic or I'm agnostic when it comes to whether an idea is going to do really well in front of my audience or not. And so, and so even when I, something inspires me and strikes me and go, oh, this is brilliant. Oh my God. I'm going to be like, okay, I'm, this is fun. This is fun. I'm going to, I'm going to put down this idea. I'm going to share it, but I'm also going to hold lightly to whether or not my audience thinks it's brilliant. And oftentimes what I, what I think is the most brilliant thing I've ever said, the audience doesn't get it and just goes above their head or it's because like i said your your newness your novelty your brilliance is based on the context of everything you've been through your audience hasn't lived exactly your life they lived their life and so that's why what's completely brilliant to you might be for them like well, i don't get it or that doesn't seem anything that interesting and, uh, and on the other hand some things that seem very obvious to you when you put it out there will be revolutionary for other people so the only sane strategy that i've come to for dealing with this issue right of hey we got to hold lightly to the results is we must put more ideas out there and to put more ideas out there means we need to show up consistently rather than wait for inspiration to strike one day one month or whatever, and then, oh, no inspiration for a while. And oftentimes when we wait for inspiration to strike and then it kind of peters out, it's because we put something out there that we thought was brilliant and we don't get the response that we expected. We were attached. We say, well, this it's inspiration must also create a, a big, brilliant effect in others as well. We're attached to that outcome. And so when it's not, then of course we get discouraged and then we our creativity lies fallow for, for a while. Instead, I always say, create lightly, create lightly, create your, make your process light. Don't, you know, don't um, beat yourself up by saying, oh, this idea wasn't good. Oh, the, no, you just show up and you just do the work lightly. You, you put in the work, you put in the work, you do the, you put in the energy and the time, but you work lightly without beating yourself up. Oh, this is a good idea. This is not a good idea. No, no. You just go, oh, this is interesting. Hmm, this doesn't make quite make sense yet. Well, let me try it this way. You, you work lightly. You play. Okay. And then you put it out there consistently. You show up consistently. You put things out there consistently. And then you get curious. Oh, interesting. That idea really worked super well. Oh, that idea didn't work really well. You stay curious. You put it out there. And over time, this means you're putting a lot of ideas out there. And a lot of ideas out there means inevitably, some of them you will notice will do better than others. Okay. And then you notice what does better than others and you study the pattern. Why is it that these did well? What does that tell me about my audience that these did well and that these didn't do well? What can I learn from it? Now, very important. I always have to say, don't judge an idea based on, hey, I put a picture of myself out there. I put a picture of my cat or dog out there and that did really well. So, and every time I talk about my business, it doesn't do well. That's not, you're, you're, you're comparing apples to oranges. Of course, a picture of you is going to get more likes than, hey, here's my thing I'm going to try to sell you. Okay. People go on social media to enjoy, 
to give get some relief, right? Rather than to like, well, let me go on social media to consider what should I buy right now? So of course it's going to, some things will do, some categories will do better than other categories. You, you simply compare things within a single category to one another, okay? You still have to talk about your business, even though it doesn't get as many likes, but you just have to compare the different ways you talk about your business, which one does better versus when you write an article, sharing your ideas, that's a separate category, which one your articles do better. When you make a video, right? That's a separate category, which of your videos do better and why it might, might it be so. All right, so I'm just gonna wrap it up by saying this. Your inspiration must be respected. To respect your inspiration means to act on it, okay? To act on it on a consistent basis. You get inspired, you write it down, and you show up. So you, only, you not only respect your inspiration, but you respect your discipline because the discipline teaches you how to generate inspiration at will. At first, life is kind and gives you inspiration occasionally. That's kind of like free, like bonus, bonus inspiration, free inspiration. You get that just as life occasionally saying, you can do it. You know, here's something that might be interesting for you. But then it's up to you to respect the discipline of generating inspiration. As I mentioned, you carve out consistent time. Okay, first you capture ideas as they come to you. You write them down and then you carve out consistent time to look at the ideas you've written down and just pick the least uninspiring. Doesn't matter. They're all going to be feel stale because it's already past the moment of inspiration. You pick the least uninspiring. You set a timer and says, I'm just, I'm willing here. I'm willing. <laughs> you can make it a sacred act because it is. Creativity is a sacred act. I'm willing. Dear creativity, dear spirit of creativity, I'm willing to try I'm going to play with this idea. This is my least uninspiring idea here. I'm going to play with that idea. I'm going to try different ways of filling in the gaps, talking about it, um, seeing how it might relate to something that's important to me right now, important to my clients right now. I'm going to try, 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 try for an hour, for half an hour, whatever, whatever time limit you set. And then I'm going to put it out there. I'm going to respect my audience enough to put it out there to let them tell me whether it's inspiring for them or not, because I cannot, I cannot be the final judge of my content. I, the, the whole point of content is to make an impact in other people's lives, right? I hope so. Yes, it's, it helps you explore, but it's also to make an impact in other people. So you have to let it be seen. Let them decide whether it's boring, interesting, brilliant. They might have questions that give you more content ideas. Do this consistently, and over time, you will develop this body of work that delights you. And there's my ghost thumb <laughs> saying thumbs up on, on that, for those of you watching the video. Um, so I hope this is helpful, and I look forward to seeing if this inspires you or not, or what is your process of generating inspiration rather than waiting for it? What's your process of dealing with old or so-called stale ideas that was inspiring to you at some point, but no longer is. Do you still respect that original inspiration? Do you work with it in some way? Do you have a list that you go down and find the least uninspiring one, the one that still has a bit of a spark? What's your process? Feel free. If you want to share, comment below. Inspire. You might inspire others who are seeing the comments as well. And of course, any questions, feel free to comment below. Thanks for joining me on this journey. I wish you well.